The Chinese are no longer on Indian territory in Galwan, reports said quoting sources. The temporary structures built by Chinese soldiers at the illegally occupied site at the river bend embankment are being removed by both sides. There are some indicators that China has started de-escalating from the Fingers region in Pangong, the reports added. The Chinese military has dismantled tents and structures near the site of the clash, and vehicles have been seen withdrawing from the area, as well as at the hot springs and Gogra, two other contested border zones, according to the reports. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval held talks with Chinese Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi over video call, the Ministry of External Affairs said on Monday. According to a report in the Hindustan Times, the video call took place on Sunday night before the People's Liberation Army were reported to have taken the first few steps to move back from the standoff points in the Galwan area. The Ministry of External Affairs in a statement said the duo had a frank and in-depth exchange of views on the recent developments in the western sector of the India-China border areas. The Hindustan Times report said talks were focused on what is being described as full and enduring restoration of peace and tranquility along the line of actual control. The two sides also spoke about working together to avoid such incidents in future, the report quoted a top government official saying. Delhi's COVID-19 tally on Monday breached the 1 lakh mark as the national capital recorded 1,379 fresh coronavirus cases in the past 24 hours. There were 48 more deaths in this period and the total cases now stand at 1 lakh 823. The silver lining, however, is the recovery rate which has exceeded 70%. According to the Delhi government's daily health bulletin, as many as 749 patients recovered in this period. Till now, 72 2,088 people have recovered, 25,620 are active cases and 3,115 patients have succumbed to the disease. This means that the city has a case fatality rate of 3%. On the 23rd of June, the national capital had reported its highest single-day spike of 3,947 cases. However, in the last few days, the number of fresh cases have oscillated, not showing a particular trend in figures. Coronavirus is spreading at the community level in Karnataka, State Minister J.C. Madhuswamy said on Monday. We've reached a point where it's difficult for the district authorities to restrain it, but they're still trying. Somewhere the situation has gone out of hands, the minister said in Tumkur, where nine people have died of COVID-19. Earlier, Chief Minister Yadurappa had denied community transmission of the virus in the state. Karnataka has reported close to 24,000 coronavirus cases and 372 deaths so far. Taking a swipe at the Yogi Adityanath led Uttar Pradesh government for the killing of eight policemen by gangster Vikas Dubey, the Shiv Sena warned that notorious history sheeter should not become the Dawood Ibrahim of Nepal for India. In its mouthpiece Samna, the Sena said that the killings of the police personnel during a raid has exposed the encounter specialist UP government and asked what has changed since Yogi Adityanath became the chief minister in March 2017. The Samna editorial said that Dubey is set to have fled to neighboring Nepal and pointed out to the porous border and current relations with Nepal. The Home Ministry on Monday allowed universities and higher education institutions to conduct final examinations, laying to rest speculations that the HRD Ministry would cancel exams this year due to the COVID-19 crisis. The University Grants Commission has decided against scrapping exams for graduating students. In a meeting held on Monday, the higher education regulator decided to advise universities and colleges to conduct final semester examinations by September end. Universities and college will assess the graduating batch through an examination conducted in either online or offline or blended mode. Students who cannot appear for the final semester or final year exam, universities will hold a special exam for them after September. The UGC notification earlier told varsities to hold term end exams from the 1st to the 15th of July and declare results by the end of the month. Jammu and Kashmir is likely to reopen for tourism soon. Principal Secretary of Power and Information in Jammu and Kashmir, Rohit Kansal, on Monday said that the government will issue detailed guidelines and SOPs shortly. He added that the Lieutenant Governor issued directions in this regard at a high-level meeting in Srinagar. Jammu and Kashmir has been out of bounds for tourists for almost a year now. The Union Territory was first under strict curbs post the abrogation of Article 370 in August last year and later due to the coronavirus outbreak. The United 
United States has said it would not allow foreign students to remain in the country if all their classes are moved online in the fall because of the coronavirus crisis. U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement said that State Department will not issue visa to students enrolled in schools or programs that are fully online for the fall semester, nor will U.S. Customs and Border Protection permit these students to enter the United States. Most U.S. colleges and universities have not yet announced their plans for the fall semester. A new Kuwaiti law aimed at reducing the number of foreign workers in the country threatens the jobs of lakhs of Indians in the Gulf nation. The bill proposes that the number of Indians who form the largest expatriate community in Kuwait be reduced to 15% of the country's 48 lakh population. There are about 14 lakh Indians in Kuwait and 15% quota would mean that their presence reduces down to 6.5 to 7 lakh. Kuwait's Prime Minister has proposed reduction in the number of expats from 70% to 30% of the total population. As the whispers of World T20 being cancelled this year get louder, the chances of Indian Premier League happening in that window are getting stronger. After getting support from Sri Lanka and UAE for hosting the Cash Rich League, New Zealand has now offered to host the A-team tournament. A senior BCCI official told PTI that hosting the league in India is top priority, but if the conditions due to the global pandemic are not ideal, then the IPL will be staged outside the country. In that case, BCCI was earlier offered help by Sri Lankan and UAE cricket boards, and now New Zealand too has offered to host the tournament. IPL has twice moved out of the country, once in 2009 when the complete tournament took place in South Africa, and then in 2014 when the initial part was hosted by the UAE. While UAE appears to be the frontrunner to host the league, as there is a minimal time difference in multiple venues, New Zealand has been relatively COVID-19 free.